What's going on guys, it's Simo, and boy do I have a video for you today. A lot of you guys really enjoyed my tier list of every single banned card in Yu-Gi-Oh! But I think we're gonna go ahead and step it up another level. Today, we are going to be ranking every single core Yu-Gi-Oh! booster set that has ever been released. Now, there's four core sets typically released in a year. I think they're somewhere in the neighborhood of about 78 to 80 core sets, so uh, this this is going to be a long one, ladies and gentlemen. Strap in. There's also something very aesthetic about looking at all of this. Now, here are the tiers. We have S, A, B, C, D, and F, which is the worst. S is obviously the best. Just to give you a frame of reference for what we're going to be going for here, an S tier set is going to be like, there's going to be so many heavy hitters that it's just going to ascend and nothing can really beat it. And an F tier set, well, we'll get to those when we get to them. So first set we have to go by here, it looks like is actually Absolute Power Force. Absolute Power Force is a bit of an interesting set. Uh, this is from the Synchro era of the game, and I was actually on a hiatus during this time, so I'm not as familiar with these sets as I am compared to some of the others. We have Battle Fader in here. We have some other decent cards. I pretty much had my first experience from this set solely through the progression series. Gravekeeper's Descendant is a good one, but it's not like a crazy good one. I'm looking for cards in here that are really going to sell me on this set. Cards of Consonance is fine, but it's not really that great. Gravekeeper Stelle is okay. I mean, it gets good get a little bit later. Fiendish Chain's a very good card, but looking at the rest of this here, unless the secret rares are at the bottom are just going to be absolutely just game breaking, which doesn't look like they're going to be. I, I kind of want to give it like a C tier, but I actually almost want to give it like a D tier because it's like okay, but it only really had a couple of good chase cards. It had the Fiendish Chain, it had the Battle Fader, and that was it. And so I think we're actually going to give this a D. Abyss Rising is up next. Now, everyone obviously knows Abyss Rising as the set that brought us the Mermail archetype. And so for that, it's definitely going to be better than Absolute Power Force because this was like a tier one deck forever. We also got some Adulce stuff, some Prophecy stuff. We also have some other cards in here, especially in the XC slot. Gaga got Cowboy. Uh, Gandiva is also pretty good. We have Gaios, which is insane. Tiramisu for the Medulce archetype. That is just already an incredibly strong set of cards. Even for Spellbooks, Eternity, we have Fate, we have Grand Spellbook Tower. I think that's already really decent enough. Memory of an Adversary was also a decent trap. Magic Deflector, just look how many more playable cards. And Abyss Dweller as well. I'm actually going to give Abyss Rising like maybe an A tier actually. I think that was actually a pretty decent set. I might move this to B depending on like how we end up doing these tiers. But for now, I think Abyss Rising is an A. Next up, we have Ancient Prophecy. Going back to the Synchro era here. So Ancient Prophecy does have a, a little bit of Blackwing support. Support. We do have the Vayu. We have Shiny Black Sea, which is not that good. Fishboard Blaster is a very strong card, and it is a banned card. That's also why I like using this website specifically, so I can easily single this out. Ancient Fairy Dragon's a beast. Like, I mean, there's really not much more to say. Gotham's is also a house as well, but uh, it doesn't seem like it packs nearly the same punch as uh, something like Abyss Rising did, right? Rekindling's a good card. Fossil Dig's good, but it doesn't get good till much later. Fairy Wind's decent. I actually do like this a little bit better, I think, than an absolute power force. We have some okay cards in here. And so I think for this reason, I'm actually going to give Ancient Prophecy a C. I think it's slightly better than Absolute Power Force, but uh, I think Abyss Rising is still definitely better. Ancient Sanctuary is up next. And Ancient Sanctuary is one of, I would say, the forgotten sets of like the first few ones that we have. Uh, Zaborg debuts in this set. Legendary Jujutsu Master is also a decent one back then. Again, you have to take some of this in context of the time of when these cards were good, but Zaborg was like meta defining for a very strong period of time. Enemy controller, monster gate. There's some decent spell cards in the set. And then when we get into the trap department, wall of revealing light did help with like last turn FTK or OTK. So that's kind of funny. We're scrolling on down though to see if there's anything else that's like super, super notable. Night assailant was actually pretty decent, but uh, looking at the rest of this, I don't think there's too much level limits. Okay. As well. But as we get to the end here, mm, I, I feel like this is like a C tier set. I, I, I want to put this in here. It has like a couple good cards. This might be... <laughs> 
Is it a C? I think this might be a D tier, actually. I mean, it's like Zaborg and a couple of the cards in here were, but nah, you know what? I'll put it to C, actually. Some of these cards were actually very relevant, and I still think this is like marginally better than Absolute Power Force, but it's pretty close. Blazing Vortex. This is actually one of the newest Yu-Gi-Oh sets, as a matter of fact, and I gotta be honest with you guys, Blazing Vortex was not that great. It was... Uh, I don't even want to say it was fine, because it wasn't really that either. This set actually had... A little bit of difficulty selling. Obviously, it does have the Starlight Rares, which is nice and does introduce a few decent cards. But aside from like Pot of Prosperity, which was like the only reason to really get this set, there wasn't really anything else that was like wow in this set. And so I think for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and give this a D tier. And uh, I honestly think Pot of Prosperity is doing a lot of the heavy lifting there. Breakers of Shadow moving into uh, the Pendulum era here. Wow, this set's actually cracked. Monkey board. I'm pretty sure Solemn Strike is in this set. We also have, oh, Destruction Sword is in here as well. I mean, that card got broken way later. We also have uh, the Performer Pal Pendulum Sorcerer guiding Ariadne. Oh man, there are some very good cards in this set and uh, that might make it better than some of these other sets that we've already done. Twin Twin, oh, Twin Twister as well. Are you serious? That's going to be tough. I, I honestly think Kaiju Slumber's in here, some Kaiju, some of the Cosmo stuff. Uh, Neptibus is in here, Infinity. You know what, actually? Rafflesia as well. This set was cracked. I'm actually going to give this an S tier. I think this helped introduce one of the most broken decks in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, and some of these cards are so staple, they still see play today, and that is actually pretty rare that that happens in modern sets specifically, especially since this set is about five years old now. Cosmo Blazer going Going into the Fire Fists. I know the Fire Fists were one of the biggest selling points of Cosmo Blazer, but was there really a lot else? We do get a couple pieces of Mermail support. Lead was like a one of in those Mermail decks. Getting down to the Xyz monsters here. Diamond Dyer and Shidori were actually pretty decent, but uh, ooh, Spellbook of the Master is actually a pretty decent one as well. I don't get like the same vibe though with this set as oh, break. Ooh, maybe I spoke too soon. Breakthrough Skill, Medrot, Abyssius is okay. You know, Abyssius is in here too uh crimson blader yeah okay okay um i think i'm gonna put this up i think i'm gonna give this a i think i want to give this a b but i may either move this up here because it's like i actually feel like it's on par with abyss rising in a lot of ways but i'm not sure i feel like abyss rising is just like slightly better i don't know why but uh b tier for now oh man cyber dark impact this is notoriously one of the worst sets in Yu-Gi-Oh's history but i think retrospectively it's not that bad when you look at it and realize how many cards were actually relevant right snipe hunter's decent vanity sphine's a good card the barrier statues of all seen tons of play vanity's ruler as well we also have cards down here such as instant fusion that card was very prominent chain strike put chain burn on the map and then we also have cards in the trap department such as accumulated fortune for chain burn black horn of heaven i don't think it's like a crazy crazy set i'm still gonna put this at you know what actually i think i'm gonna put this in c tier and i actually can't believe i'm doing this i actually think this set's better than blazing vortex because blazing vortex had about three playable cards at least cyber dark impact in retrospect has had like 10 or 15 so i think that actually outclasses it chaos impact is up next i don't even remember what the hell is in this set like that's okay so we have unchained but like that's not a good sign if i can't even think of what was in this set that would have made it any bit prominent and i actually vaguely remember making a video about this that it wasn't all that great gallant granite was good but it was only good in like one deck pyro phoenix was like fine there's some marincess stuff unchained unchained abominations pretty good masquerade is decent but like masquerade has been like the only like really good card in this set that i've seen so far and uh that's not too good desert locust is okay and everything else in here all oh, the dream mirror is gross striker dragon okay i mean there's some fine cards i think i'm gonna actually put this in like d tier there was like I think three cards that were like any bit good. This was not a fantastic set. Now, Circuit Break. I think Circuit Break is going to be a little bit better because Circuit Break has Evenly Matched and Evenly Matched just by itself is good. It was Altergeist in this set as well. We have the uh, Rocket cards in here and those are both like very decent archetypes. We also have like Metaphys and like some weird stuff in here, but like what set doesn't? Amano Iwato, we have Destrudo in here as well. Borload Dragon, which is the cover card. How could I forget that? Because Borload is actually just insane, especially back in the day. 
Starboy was actually a very big deal back at the time as well. Quick launch debuted in this set, and that's kind of crazy considering how good of a card that is now. Uh, I'm actually feeling pretty good about this. Personal spoofing, a lot of good stuff for Altergeist. Metaverse is in here. Broken Line, which became relevant later as well. This set, in retrospect, actually is pretty decent. Lyrilis Recital Starling as well. Baguska? Oh, Double Helix. Oh, man, 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 man. You know what? I'm actually going to put Circuit Break in A tier. I, I listed like 15 cards. So, like, so I think this is an A tier set. Clash of Rebellion. Again, another one of those sets where I don't really remember all that much that was in it. And that's never exactly a good sign to start things off. Okay, so we have the Perform Mages. Those were very impactful. Uh, we have Black Metal Dragon, which ended up being very good later. Luster Pendulum's pretty good. The Ignites were good for the FTKs as well. Infernoid Decatron was kind of like one of the good cards for Infernoid to put that deck on the map. Archfiend Eccentric, Magical Abductor, Toon Cyber Dragon, Retaliating C. Wow, this set's actually looking better and better the more I'm looking back at it. Trapeze Magician, Flare Metal, Brilliant Fusion as well. Wow, Red Eyes Fusion was in here too, but we didn't realize how good that was going to be later. Imagination, Chicken Game, which is another banned card. Storming Mirror Force is a giant meme, and uh, it's pretty good. We also had some of the initial Cosmo stuff in here as well. I believe these were actually some of the initial Kaijus too. And so, uh, wow, I think this set's actually pretty good. I'm going to put Clash of Rebellion. I think it's like a, I think it's like B tier, I would say. I don't feel like it's like circuit break level, but it's, it's pretty decent. Code of the Duelist. Anytime we have a green set, that is going to be probably an S or an A tier, but aside from Firewall Dragon, what else did we have in Code of the Duelist? Well, we had the Trick Stars. That's already a great start. And we also had the Gokis as well. Those were two tier one archetypes for the better part of a year. World Chalice was like a very decent rogue deck. We had the Twilight cards, which are also not too bad. We also just had a bunch of other like random good stuff in here, like Supreme King, Dragon Starving Venom. We had Dragon Dark Rebellion, which was saw a ton of play. We have Topologic Bomber Dragon. We have Ib. We have Ningirsu. This is some of the first link monsters in the game like Gaia Saber and Mrs. Radiant. Light Stage is in here because it's Trickstar, so we have all that initial support, Reincarnation. I mean, this is just one of those classic sets, right? We even have Heavy Storm Duster and Back to the Front. Like, look at how many playable cards are in this set. I, I think this was meta-defining. I mean, this was the set that kind of brought Lynx into the forefront, and it's kind of the first set that brought Lynx into the game altogether. Firewall was broken. Trickstar was really strong. Goki was like one of the strongest decks we've ever had. I think it's an S. Crimson Crisis, going back to 2009. We have Debris Dragon, Trap Eater. Oh, we get Gale and Sirocco in here. That's pretty important for Blackwing because Blackwing was one of the best decks around this time. Dupe Frog's in here. That's pretty decent. Dark Strike Fighter's a really big one, as well as Blackwing Armor Master, Arcanite Magician as well. I think that might have gotten better a little bit later on. Pretty decent, actually. Pretty decent set. It kind of tapers off after that, I would say, looking at the rest of this here. Nothing else like ridiculous, ridiculous, crazy. Uh, I, I would say this is like a C-tier set. I think it's pretty okay. Crossed Souls is from the Duelist Alliance era. I kind of remember this set is not being too good. I think this set has Ghost Ogre, if my memory serves correctly, but I don't remember for sure. We get some of the Zephyr cards, and the Zephyr cards are pretty cool. We get some of the Infernoids. There's the Ghost Ogre, so I was correct. It did originate in there, but Ghost Ogre might have been one of the chase cards. Annoya Tillis is pretty good, because like Necroz and Shadal, that actually did kind of matter. Clear Wing was like, okay. Chow Fang was decent for that deck. Ptolemyus is actually insane, so like that's, a, that's points for this one, so can't scratch that off too quickly. Oracle of Zephra. Galaxy Cyclone was cool, but it wasn't like game warpingly powerful or anything like that. Lose One Turn was actually pretty decent. Fiend Griefing for Burning Abyss as well. That was pretty good. We got some new BAs. We got the Pilgrim. This set's actually not bad. It, it's like, it's okay. I don't think it's like crazy, crazy. I think this is uh this is probably a C tier. C for Cross Souls. Oh boy, Cybernetic Revolution. Now, a lot of people are going to want to put this set very high on this list, but I can assure you Cyber Dragon might be like the only good card in this set. It's a very important one, but there weren't many other good cards in here. Drillroy did make an impact back in the day, and that was important. So did Bubble Man. So not to say there aren't some important cards. Goblin Elite Attack Force for Skill Drain Beatdown was good, as well as Lele, another Goblin Attack Force. Essentially, we do have the Cyber Twin and the Cyber End, as well as the Power Bond. Miracle Fusion was, like, good for some hero decks. We also had System Down to stop these machine decks later on, and that would prove to come up many a times. We also had Magical Explosion. Like, it was a good card. Dimension Wall for Burn wasn't terrible either. But a lot of these cards were very niche and very specific. So I'm actually going to... 
I don't really want to put this in D tier because Cyber Dragon was such a strong, impactful card for the game, but the rest of the set kind of weighs it down. I think Cybernetic Revolution's a C tier. Crossroads of Chaos, obviously everyone knows this set for Black Rose Dragon, but was there a lot of other good stuff in here? Again, this was from the time where I was on my hiatus, so I don't recall for sure. Titania was important for the plant deck. Plague Spreader was very strong and uh, still is to this day, as a matter of fact. There's the Black Rose. That's everyone's uh, fav one of everyone's favorite synchro monsters, I would say. Looking through the rest of this though, Miracle Fertilizer is pretty good. Spell uh, Secret Village of the Spellcasters was also pretty neat, but wow, this set actually kind of blows. I'm not going to lie. Goes in matches good, but uh, wow, there is just not a lot in here that really stood the test of time. I actually think I'm going to give Crossroads of Chaos a D tier. This set has not really impressed me aside from like Black Rose and like one or two other cards, but that's pretty much like the makeup of the entire D tier. Cybernetic Horizon seems like one of those forgettable sets for me because again I can't think of like really anything that was super good in here hers is good for the cyber dragon deck uh we're already down to the rituals we had the retrains of like demise and ruin which is cool boral sword's a very good card don't get me wrong but equimax is like fine seeger was like a hayate's kind of good for sky striker reprodocus we witch's apprentice okay so we're starting to get to some cards that are like not god awful that's a slightly good set sign uh overflow wow this set actually kind of okay the dangers okay the dangers kind of changed this a little bit because the dangers are actually really good that's like it though it's like dangers and boral sword uh I'm actually giving this a D. The dangers are incredible, don't get me wrong, and Boral Sword's good, but like, that's it. Dark Neo Storm is up next, and we see no material right off the bat. That's an okay one. It's definitely situational. I'm looking through to see if there's anything else that's catching my eye, and we're already down to the Synchros, and that is not, well, like, Ib is actually crazy, so we can't uh, omit that. Dingirsu's good. Okay, Dingirsu's a pretty decent card for Orcus. Mech Knight Crusade Abramax is decent. Sign Up Mining was good. That was a good searcher. Oh, Fusion Destiny. So this did help with the hero stuff. Obviously, we had Cross Crusader in the links as well. Mystic Mine. Damn, that's a card. Okay. Orcus Crescendo with Crackdown in here. Okay. Okay. It's starting to get a little bit better. Starting to get a little bit better. And then we get some other random stuff towards the bottom. Cherubini is actually a very, very good one. This is like a C tier. I think this is like better than Cybernetic Horizon because like I feel like there was more playable cards in this than here, but not by much though. Not by much. Dark Crisis. Now we're back into my territory here. Going back all the way to 2003. Uh, Dark Crisis this is an interesting one. Vampire Lord Reflect Bounder back in the day was actually very good. Different Dimension Dragon was funny, but not that great. We also had uh, just stuff for like Beast Down, like Yaku Jude Panda. We had Didi Warrior Lady, which is actually very impactful. Butterfly Dagger Elma, a card that I still don't understand how it works, and it's 2021. Final Attack Orders, Ojama Trio, Skill Drain, Kaiser Gliders, like eh, kind of whatever. We had an Archfiend Soldier, which is like a rare 1900 vanilla, which is actually pretty rare back in the day, but it was a pretty big deal. Tsukiyomi's pretty good. That's a card you can't write off. Uh, spell reproduction for those uh, spell turbo decks. Final countdown, that's another one too. Oh, Sakuretsu armor is actually pretty big too. I can't, can't really omit that. Yeah, Dark Crisis is like a C, I think. So it has some very powerful cards that stood the test of time in DD Warrior Lady, Sakuretsu armor. These cards would see play for like several years. Dimension of Chaos is an interesting one. A lot of people will remember this for the set that brought us Cosmo Dark Destroyer, I believe. It also did bring us Plush Fire and Mirror Conductor, but we didn't have the other broken stuff for the pendulum deck at that point vector was also pretty decent we did get the magic specters which were a good archetype in their own right and then we also just did get some random stuff like a vortex dragon's pretty good scarlight's also not terrible either kelly yuga's pretty good as well as magister paladin as well painful decision was okay for decks that wanted to search normal monsters specifically blazing mirror force really never saw much play dark destroyer was kind of one of the big selling points of the set i would say we also had radian and gamma seal which were just crazy, crazy kaiju cards and uh, would basically just help reign in the era of kaiju. Aside from like a couple heavy hitters here, I guess we have one fully playable archetype. So was it that bad? I don't think it's D bad. So I think I'm going to put Dimension of Chaos as a C tier. Duelist Revolution's up next. And this is a very weird one. A lot of people in retrospect might see Effect Veiler and think that this set is crazy, but it's actually not as good as you might think. Aside from Veiler and Pot of Duality, 
Vitality. That might be like the best cards in the set because the rest of it is not particularly exciting. As we scroll through here, Scrap Dragon, I guess, is a third one as well. I can't forget that because Scrap Dragon's actually very good. Sees tons of play and did see ton of play back in the day. We saw the duality. We just went straight past that. Horn of the oh, Warning's actually in here as well. God damn, that's tough, right? I mean, duality, warning, effect veiler, and scrap dragon by extension as well. Those are three of the most impactful cards ever, like in Yu-Gi-Oh! Effect veiler is like one of the first ever real hand traps. Solemn warning was crazy because it was like the retrain of solemn judgment. It's hot. Does that, is that enough to elevate the set to a B though? Like, I, I think it might be, but I, I really want to give it a C because those cards were all just insane. But but the rest of the set is just like not that great. It's a tough one. This is a really, this is a really, really tough one. I think because of how good Valor, Duality, and Judgment are, I'm going to give this a B, but it's a very, very loose B. No, I can't do it. I, I cannot do it. I need to put this at C tier. Those cards are so good. To be fair, D tier is the set that has like three good cards and that's it. But those three cards specifically were so impactful and are still impactful to this day. I'm going to give it a C. Duelist Alliance, I don't even have to look at this, is an S tier. Duelist Alliance might be one of, if not maybe the best set in Yu-Gi-Oh! of all time. This set is crazy. This set introduced the Pendulum cards for the first time, and when you see these first cards, you may not think it's that good, but the whole Satellar archetype is in here. Shadal's got introduced in here. Yang Zing's got introduced in here. We also have the Burning Abyss cards a little bit later on as well. We got Window. We got Construct. We have Deltros. Castell was just a generic rank four that was insane. Shadal Fusion. Yang Zing Path for the Yang Zing players. Magical Springs seen play. The Monarch Storm forth for Monarch decks. We have Stellar Nova Alpha, Sinister Shadow Game, Shadal Core. Like, look at how many cards in here have seen play. And then here we have all of the TCG exclusives, Skarm, Graf, Seer, Dante, Traveler. And we even have the UAs as like a fun little casual archetype as well that's like actually half decent. Felice for Light Sword Strategies. Panzer Dragon is a decent instant fusion target. This set is legendary. This set introduced three tier one archetypes into the game and one like tier two slash rogue archetype in Yang Zing. Fantastic set. Phenomenal S tier no question. Elemental energy, on the other hand, I don't think as much. Now, we do get Wild Heart. That's a decent one. Hydro Get On's one of my favorite cards, so it is funny. Dark Worlds did debut in here, but the Dark Worlds were kind of like hit or miss. They did see play, but they were questionable in terms of how good they were. Avarice is a key card in the set, I will say, but Avarice was kind of like the only card people really wanted from this set. Unless you were specifically fiending for Dark World, I'm actually not going to lie to you guys. I think Elemental Energy is like an F tier set. Avarice is the only like decent card in here and everything else. Sans Dark World, I, I mean, I'm just not feeling it. So I'm going to give it an F. Sticking with the GX era, Enemy of Justice. Uh, this set's interesting. We have Diamond Dude. We have Cyber Phoenix. We have cards such as Majestic Mech Oka, which did see play as a matter of fact. You might see that in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! at some point. Banisher the Radiance, a fantastic anti-meta tool. Dimensional Fisher, Macro Cosmos. Those cards just paved the way for macro decks to eventually see play. Icarus attack was good for Blackwing later. Force back was like an okay counter trap as well. I don't think this set's fantastic. I think it's better than elemental energy though. So for that reason, I will give it a D. It's not the best, but I think this is where it deserves. Eternity Code. Fast forward to the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. I feel like this set was okay. Uh, we have Parallel Exceed, which is a good card. Uh, Code Breaker Zero Day has actually seen just like ridiculous play in some fun combo decks. Noct Division Dragon was in here. We have some like Nemesis stuff, which is, hey, everyone thinks it's good, but it's not. We have the Ancient Warriors. Gearsu is in here, which is a great card. Chamber Dragon Maid as well. We had some of the Generator stuff. Gizmek Uka did see some bit of play. Union Driver for like ABC is actually crazy. Ghost Mourner, Moonlit Chill, Animadorned Archosaur. Invoked Agoides is actually a very good card too. Ravenous Crocodragon, Archithes is great. This Trap Tricks card is actually pretty decent. Axis Code Talker is a fantastic finisher that sees tons of play. Linkross is broken, and that's why it's banned. We have Area the Water Charmer as well. And that was just it for the monsters, right? I mean, the spells aren't looking that great. And as we go into the trap here, Grave Digger Trap Hole is pretty good. That does see play from time to time with Trap Tricks, Raphlesia, some Plunder Patrol stuff. This set's not bad. I think this set's okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this as a C tier. I think it's decent. Extreme Force, uh, I'm not sure about this one. I vaguely remember this set not being that great. And as I see Tin Dangles, that's not exactly helping uh, quell any fears I may have. Mech Knight Blue Sky is pretty decent. So we did get the Mech Knights in this set. Some of the Mist Thickle Beast stuff is pretty good, actually. So, okay. That knocks it up a couple. Contact C is a good hand trap. I remember there was just, like, nothing really, like, pulling people besides 
rides from like Saryuja? Maybe Saryuja might have been like the big pull in this set. And also, I'm completely forgetting. Hey, True Nade was fine. It was like okay. Manifestation for Alter Guys was cool. There can be only one. Uh, not feeling this one, you guys. Not feeling this one. Curious is pretty. Oh, actually, no. Later, this set gets good. This set actually. Okay, now I'm rem starting to remember. So this set sucks, except for the Link monsters that they imported from the Link Vrains pack in the OCG, which is curious. Gem Knight Phantom Quartz. Uh, Isold is crazy. Metal Tron Zephyr is nuts. A Heavy Metal's Electromite is obviously like insane. So Extreme Force would have been terrible, but they did do that. I'm still going to give it a D tier because the rest of the set's kind of garbage, but it does have like a couple really, really incredibly broken Link monsters. Extreme Victory is another set that again, was from my era where I wasn't really playing, so I'm not as familiar. Reborn Tengu is pretty good though, so that's a good start. TGs were in this set. Okay, TGs are pretty decent. Some Psychic stuff. Oh, do we get the Broken Six Sam stuff in here? There's Elder. That's a good start for that. TG Wonder Magician's pretty good. Not really looking too good. Like, aside from, like, the TG stuff and, like, a few, like, pieces of Six Sam support, this debunk was decent. Safe Zone actually did matter for a lot of decks as well. Oh, Tour Guides. I mean, Tour Guides in here. Okay, that matters. I kind of feel like it's, like, D-Rev, where there was only, like, a couple good... I'm actually getting Extreme Victory a D. I I'm not super impressed by this. It's, like, it's fine, but I don't think it's that great. Flaming Eternity is a set that is, uh, it it's okay. Uh, Sacred Phoenix of Nethys is a decent card. Grand Marg is one of the worst monarchs, but it's half decent. It just kind of depends. Givri the Swordmaster is one of the coolest looking ultimate rares of all time. I don't care what anyone says. That card is sick, even though it is terrible. Rescue Cat's a very good common, but doesn't get good till later. Gatling and King Dragoon were used for all sorts of stuff in goat format. Lightning Vortex is good. Swords of Concealing Light became good very later on. Threatening War, Phoenix Wing, Wind Blast. Some playable cards in here, and they did make an impact, but again, only a few. It was very few and far between. I'm, I'm going to give this a D tier, actually. Th this set was like, it was okay, but not fantastic. Flames of Destruction, the first thing that comes to mind in this set is Infinite Impermanence, and the fact that I can at least remember a card from here is already a great start. Multifaker for Altergeist, uh, Nightmare Corruptor Idli is in here as well. I'm liking this. Tiamaton's okay. Ghost Bell is actually very good. Trisbania's nuts. Space Insulator is very good. We also have cards like Mer- Oh, the Nightmares are in here. Wow, the nightmares are in here too. Damn, Vampire Sucker, the Great Fly is kind of whatever. World Legacy Secession as well. Sekka's Light, Called by the Grave. Red Reboot, wow. You know, there's the Imperm, Waking the Dragon too. This this may be, I, I, I may get some flack for this. I'm gonna give this an S tier. And the reason I'm giving this an S tier, Infinite Impermanence, the Nightmares. Look at how many cards are just so commonly played nowadays in this set. I think maybe most people might put this as like an A tier set, but honestly, I think this might justify an S tier. Force of the Breaker, this is the Volcanic and Crystal Beast set. This set is... Uh, I know Ryza's in here and Ryza is nuts. We've also seen Norlyrus and Invincible C play from time to time. There's Ryza. That was like the selling point of this set. But to be honest, that might've been the only selling point of this set. And everything else in here is kind of shit. Not gonna lie. Some of these dark cards like Eradicator as well as Prometheus saw play at some point. But I think I'm gonna give this an F tier. And honestly, I it kind of pains me to do this because Ryza is like my second favorite card of all time. That was like the only good card in this set. Everything else in here just really sucked. Galactic Overlord, I think this is the Hieratic set. Yeah, this is the Hieratic set. Okay, Card Card D is also a good one too. Is there anything else in here that was like super, super notable? I'm, I remember we just did this in progression. Do we get, no, Insectors primarily came out in order of chaos, which this is the set afterwards. Some of the light race stuff is like decent. I guess Strike Bouncer, Papal Operative, Gaia Dragon, a tomb, uh, Heliopolis. These are all just incredible cards for their respective archetype. Nightbeam's fine. It, it's not like the best piece of removal, but it's decent. It, it's seen play. Looking at the rest of this, it's it's kind of whatever. Big Eye's actually a very good card, I, I will say, but mm, I don't know. This one's weird. I This one, Hieratic was like a decent deck, but like there wasn't really like a chase card in here necessarily. It did have an, I, I think I'm gonna give this a D tier. Galactic Overlord's kind of a letdown to be honest. Generation Force, the set that introduced Xyz monsters into the game. Now, Generation Force has some good cards because you have Wind Up Magician, you have just some very strong standalone cards, 
but it's kind of very top heavy at times. Leviathan Dragon, uh, your Levier, your Tyrus, Adrius is later, Wonder Wand as well. I remember when we did this set in the progression series and it wasn't too exciting because we weren't able to really like take advantage of a lot of these cards. Sea Lancer for Gage and anyone who played the Frog Monarch. Orient Dragon's also kind of cool too. Mm. Hero Lives and Roach are also pretty good. I'm not feeling this one. It's like, it's okay. I, I think this is like a D tier. It's, it's like an, it's like a fine set, but it, it wasn't like mega game changing aside from like the fact that you could detach Sangan off a of Levier. I, I don't think this is really a C tier. Gladiator's Assault, I believe is actually crazy because of all the Gladiator Beast stuff, but I forget which of it. I know it all debuts in here, but I forget where some of the like very strong power cards are because I think they actually come in a later set. I think they come in Phantom Darkness if my memory serves. We get a Nishi, we get Spirit of the Six Samurai for the Six Sam archetype. We get some Fusion that have never seen play. Oh, Heraklinos is in here. Okay, Heraklinos is very good. Glads have been one of the best decks in the past, so gotta give it a little bit of respect for that. Cunning is an okay card too. Light Imprisoning, Shadow Imprisoning, but wow, this actually kind of seems like a Gladiator Beast or Bust sort of set. Like Test Tiger and the like. Royal Firestorm Guards was good for the uh, Volcanics. Necroface is cool. Soul Taker, Silent Doom. Some very just classic like anime cards in here, but uh, where do I put this? It, it seems like it's still missing some stuff as well, because I think Proving Ground was like in Phantom Darkness, which is weird. I don't know. It, it just kind of seems like all or nothing on the Glad stuff. Uh, I, I think I'm actually going to give this a D tier. Holy crap, Ignition Assault. This set is garbage. I remember when this set came out that people were just completely sad about it. It has a couple redeeming factors. Rose is a card. Gizmet Kaku is a generic card that a lot of decks could actually play, and some of them did. A lot of the Ad Ignis or stuff Cross Sheep, Ausa, Gravity Controller. That might be it. That that might be the end of it right there. Okay, Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm as well. So it's like Lightning Storm, Kaku, and some other random cards you may play in very specific decks. I guess it's slightly better than like Force of the Breaker because there's at least like one or two redeeming cards, but I, I'm very tempted to give this an F tier because aside from Lightning Storm, this set kind of blows. Invasion Vengeance is one of those sets that I don't particularly particularly remember all that much, which is never a good sign. We've got Christrons. We have the Water True King. Okay. Doki Doki was good later in Ad Emancipator. Cerevis is kind of whatever. We got some of the Metal Foe stuff in here, and that was good for that deck. So it does get some points there. Plenty of Christrons. So Denglong's pretty good. Okay. Denglong's fine. Totally awesome. Okay. That definitely uh, helps this set out a lot. Started poorly, but definitely recovering very quickly. Is that it? Oh, Dimensional Barrier. Wow. That's actually a big one. Um, Subterror Nemesis Archer. We've got the Subterror stuff. Oh, Spiral stuff's in here too, like Resort. Hmm, interesting, interesting. We also have Paleos in here too. I was going to give this a D. I think I'm actually going to give this a C. I'm a little bit reluctant to do that, but this just seems a little bit better than some of these D tier sets because as we got later down, there were many more playable cards. Invasion of Chaos. I don't care what anyone says. This is an S tier set. This set is responsible for the creation of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Ben list because of Chaos Emperor Dragon and basically heralded in the era of chaos and just completely shifted the way that we played the game on just a tectonic level. Like it was, it was insane. Chaos Emperor Dragon, Strike Ninja, we Berserk Gorilla, DD Scout Plane, Gigantes, Chaos Sorcerer, Grand Majuda Aiza, Blackluster Soldier. So many cards in here were just so absurdly powerful and shifted the way that we play the game. Curse Seals in here as well. We have cards such as uh, Dark Magician of Chaos is in here, Manticore of Darkness, Stealth Bird, Sacred Crane, like Enraged Battle. Battlehawks for Beast Down decks, like so many heavy hitters. And just from BLS and Chaos Emperor Dragon alone, like those are enough, right? But everything else in here is just so good. Smashing Ground was a removal tool for just eras. And then we have Dimension Fusion, which just heralded in all these different types of OTK decks until it eventually got hit on the ban list. Compulse as well. This set's legendary. Invasion of Chaos might be one of the most legendary sets in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, one of the most legendary oldest sets for sure. Judgment of the Light. This one's actually pretty funny because at the time of recording this, we actually just did this in the progression series. This set introduced the Bujins and the Bujins were a pretty solid deck for the better part of a year. We also have the Trap Tricks cards in here 
here as well. Mass Chameleon Flying Sea. Some of these cards actually did have implications later on. Star Eater was half decent as well. Key Beetle was good for locking people with like Vanity's Emptiness. We had Trap Tricks, Trap Hole Nightmares, not bad. Cockadoodle Doo is pretty cool. The Bujins are good. Coach Soldier, Wolf Bark. Uh, Fencing Fire Ferret was also a very decent card as well. I'll give this a C. It's like Bujins, I think, are going to carry this to a C because Bujins were really, really strong. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. The very first set in Yu-Gi-Oh! Legend of Blue Eyes. And you know what? It's got to be S tier. I don't care what anyone says. It has to be S tier. It's the set that started the game. How can it not be S tier? Without it, we wouldn't be here. This set is just legendary. So many cards in here are so memorable by so many different people. And some cards in here are absolutely busted that they're banned from the game because they're way too good. None of these vanilla monsters in particular, but I'm talking about cards like Pot of Greed, Dark Hole, Regeki. I mean, we have Trap Hole, which back in the day was insane. Curse of Dragon was a tribute sub in 2000 that no one could get over until Summon Skull came around, you know? Just so many just classic cards in this set. I mean, it's nostalgic. It's Yu-Gi-Oh! in its just most primitive form. Swords of Revealing Light was just like, draw three cards because no one had outs to this card. This set's a classic. Maneater Bug, Hain Hain, Monster Reborn, Pot of Greed, and the five pieces of Exodia. Like, it has to be an S tier. I don't care what anyone says. Like, yeah, it's not on the power level of Invasion of Chaos or Duelist Alliance, but this set is classic. Legacy of Darkness introduced the spirit monsters and right there is a good reason for this to have a good rating. Yada Garasu but uh, also some other decent cards as well. Dark Balter the Terrible was a decent one. We have a lot of good warrior support in here. I think Reinforcement of the Army first debuts in here. Marauding Captain, Ryu Senshi, Exiled Force, cards that saw play for years and years and some cards that still see play today like Rhoda. Tyrant Dragon, Spear Dragon, Fiend Skull Dragon which people use for like Metamorphosis and Magical Scientists some dragon support like Super Rejuve. We also had cards such as Fiber Jar in here, which was crazy. Aaronite Parshat, Twin-Headed Behemoth. This set's good. Asura Priest? I mean, I don't know. I'm really liking this one. Smoke Grenade's banned, but that card wasn't really that good back in the day, except maybe with Gear Freed. Creature Swap has seen tons of play in the past. Royal Oppression, Bottomless Trap Hole, Drop Off, Last Turn. You know what? I'm going to give this an A tier. I was actually going to initially give this a B tier, but the more I realized how many good cards were in this set for the time, this is a pretty solid A. Continuing on along though, we have Light of Destruction. This was all the light focus cards, like the Light Sworn. Honest was in this set, so that was pretty good. All the Light Sworn stuff is classic, and Judgment Dragon is still as terrifying as ever. Substitute is a crazy card. The Battery Man cards are actually like half decent, as a matter of fact. We had some other random stuff like Phantom Dragon. I guess this card saw like fringe play back in the day. I just learned that recently because of uh, some duels that I was doing with some friends. We also have some other cards in here such as Deck Lockdown. We have Limit Reverse, which wasn't terrible either. Other cards in here included stuff such as Summon Limit, and then we had all the other Secret Rare Light Sworn stuff as well. I think overall, when you look at this set in totality, Fossil Dina as well, I'm going to give this a B. I think it's definitely not like a crazy, crazy set. It definitely was enough to shape the format by introducing one of the most powerful archetypes ever, but I don't think aside from the Light Sworn stuff and like Honest, it really did a lot, but it did enough to push this into the B tier. Next up is is Labyrinth of Nightmare, another classic set. Now, this set debuts the first ever level four 1900 normal summon with zero downside, which is pretty cool. We also have some cards like the Masks, Mask of Restrict, A Curse, uh, Dispel was okay, Tornado Wall for a Legendary Ocean was cute, Fairy Box, anyone who knows the progression series knows how good this card is. But then you have stuff like Torrential Tribute, right? This is a staple card still to this very day. Like this card is insane and still sees tons of play. Card of Safe Return is like one of the most broken cards ever and should never ever ever come off the list. We also have got some cards in here like Jar of Greed, United We Stand, Mage Power. These have been limited before. I think United We Stand might have been banned at one point, as a matter of fact, which is insane to think about. Jaugen, Kaiku, Bazoo, Dark Necrofear, the Spirit Monsters, Gilosaurus. We actually have a lot of good cards in here. Last Warrior still sees play because of the shenanigans that that card does. Skull Lair, that's a really funny one, but that card actually was pretty relevant. Dark Door for slower decks. Defusion was actually a pretty decent one as well. And of course, Magic Cylinder. 
I'm actually going to give this a B. I don't think this set's like insane, but it has a lot of very impactful cards for the time, even though compared to some of the previous sets, it might have been slightly less powerful. Next up is Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy. Oh boy, this is the Dragon Ruler special. We're going to see those very shortly here. Battling Boxers did see a little bit of fringe play. We have some Mecha Phantom Beast stuff and some Fire Fist stuff as well. But then we get down to the stuff you want to see. The Dragon Rulers, all of them in their full power form before they all got banned, of course, aside from now uh, Tempest, which is limited, Gauntlet Launcher, Galaxy Eyes, Tachyon, Dragon, Shark Fortress, Zero Fin's actually not terrible either, Draco Sax, Fantastic, King of the Feral Imps, wow, this set's crazy, Spellbook of Judgment as well, I mean, Sacred Sword of Seven Stars, what more could you really ask for? And yeah, it may have just been centralized around the Dragon Rulers, but the Dragon Rulers were so powerful at the time that they just dominated everything, and they were enough to pretty much just sell the set by themselves, and make Draco Sack like a $300 card. I'm gonna give it an S tier. Uh, this set pretty much influenced Yu-Gi-Oh for the better part of like two to three years. And I think we have to give that some respect. I think up next is Legacy of the Valiant. Now this set I believe has Silent Honor Arc and Exiton Knight, if my memory serves. The Sylvans are actually pretty decent. We got some Ghost Trick stuff, some Bujin stuff. This actually did matter for Bujins because hair was pretty good. Some random raccoon stuff is in here as well. There's the Honor Arc and I'm sure we'll see the Exiton Knight here shortly. There he is. Downward's also pretty impactful. Leo's pretty good for those raccoon decks. And then we just had some other just generic stuff like Shared Ride. Like Shared Ride is a fantastic card and still sees play to this day. And so, I mean, this set's like not bad. I think there's, you know, it's a lot of it isn't too great. I would say, I think I'm going to give this like a C tier. I think this is a little bit better than some of these D tier sets just because it did have the whole Sylvan archetype on top of all the other chase poles. Holy crap, Maximum Crisis. This this set is actually very good because this set not only has the Draco stuff, it has the Preda plants, it has some of the Lyralisk stuff, which we found out is broken as a matter of fact, but it has the true Dracos and there he is, Masterpiece, the Draco slaying king himself. Zephras also good for the Zephra archetype. Balbaboon was nutty and uh, just absolutely not okay. Still can't believe that card was a common. Independent Nightingale set up a ton of FTKs. We also have Calamities in here as well and some very important Zodiac in Hammer Kong and Chaka 9. We had Dragonic Diagram. I mean, this set was pretty stacked. Set rotation on top of it. You just got a ton of just good archetype strong cards, but you also have just standalone cards as well. Unending Nightmare, Tornado Dragon. I actually think, and some spiral stuff too. We can't forget that either. I think I'm going to give this an A tier. I think Maximum Crisis is fitting of an A tier just because of how impactful it was for the game. Heading on back to 2003 now, Magician's Force. This is a set that a lot of people may think is super good, but I actually think it's one of the lesser powered sets from around this time. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still some good stuff in here, like Spell Canceler is a fantastic card. We have cards such as Kaiser Coliseum, which is absolutely broken. Wave Motion Cannon, Spell Shield is like, eh. Secret Barrel, Rivalry of Warlords. Some cards that actually still see play today, as a matter of fact. Luster Dragon was something that people were really after. The Skilled Dark Magician was fantastic. Apprentice Magician, Old Vindictive Magician were very important. Breaker the Magical Warrior, my favorite card ever. The set also does a magical scientists though, ladies and gentlemen, and that's something you cannot underestimate. Tribe Infecting Virus, Desk Koala, Magical Merchant. Uh, you know, looking through this again, I think this set was fine. My Body is a Shield also still sees play to this day as well because it's a great tool to not get blown out. So I think it's a C. I, I don't think it's a D. I think there's plenty of playable stuff in here. It's a C. Oh boy, we've got two really good sets coming up next. First up is Metal Raiders. This has to be an S tier, right? Like this set is just crazy. White Magical had is in here and that card did see tons of play back in the day. We also have, once we get through all of the uh, normal monsters, we have Magician of Faith. We have all of the Recruiters, I believe. Also for Magic Ruler and I'm forgetting, but Tribute to the Doom was huge. Change of Heart is just insane. Time Wizard was really funny, but we have Sangen, which of the Black Forest is in here somewhere. Catapult Turtle. We have cards that are just such classics, such as the all-powerful Thunder Dragon. Seven Colored Fish was like an 1800 attack vanilla and that was insane. Cannon Soldier was really good. We have Dark Elf, Witch of the Black Forest. Finally, it took like 10 years to get to that card. Solemn Judgment, Magic Jammer, Seven Tools, Horn of Heaven. These cards all saw tons of play. Robin Goblin, Mirror Force. Mirror Force was in this set. Like how, how is this not S tier, right? And we have Heavy Storm. Yeah, it's, you, 
could maybe say it's like an A tier, but I think Metal Raiders is just a classic. You know, and since we're on the topic of S tier sets, I think Magic Ruler is probably gonna have to go up there with them. Magic Ruler has so many powerful spell cards. I mean, we have Spellbinding Circle right here at the top to start things off. Mahavila was a beast back in the day because of its ability to just gain more power from the equip spells. Relinquish was an incredible card. Upstart Goblin, Snatch Steel, Confiscation, Delinquent Duo, Forceful Sentry, Mystical Space Typhoon, Giant Trunade, Painful Choice. I can't even breathe. I'm naming so many broken spell cards. Mega Morph. I mean, the list just goes on and on, and it has Hungry Burger. I mean, how is it not S tier if it has Hungry Burger in the set? Cyber Jar, Giant Rat, Senju, UFO Turtle, Giant Germ, Nimble Mamanga, Shining Angel, Mother Grizzly, Flying Kamakiri, Mystic Tomato, Sonic Bird for the Ritual Decks, Messenger of Peace. It's an S tier, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. There's nowhere else this set belongs. Let's see what we got next, because I know we're not topping Spell Ruler anytime soon. New Challengers. I think this was a set that was after Duelist Alliance. So we're going to see some Klee stuff in here, I believe. This actually might be the set that debuted Klee, and it is. Here we go. Disc. I remember when discs were like $100. There's Towers. That's going to give people nightmares. But this set also had stuff like Jow 2, which was great for the Yang Zing deck. We also have, I believe, El Shadal Fusion is in here. It might be later, though. There's Denko Seka. That's a pretty good one. We also have Shekin Naga. We have Greista, which was like, okay. Arclight was very important. Traver was good for the uh, Satellar Knight strategy and kind of helped bring that deck into competitive play. El Shadal Fusion, there it is. It came out in this set. And that might be the... I Oasis is also pretty good. Solemn Scolding as well is not a card you scoff at. Oh, Virgil and Fire Lake were in here as well. This set was stacked. This set was actually really, really good. I mean, a great follow-up to an already fantastic set being that of an S tier. I think it's an A. I think I'm going to give New Challengers an A tier. It's actually a pretty good set. Next up, we have Order of Chaos. This is the Insector set. And, uh, you know, Hornet and Dragonfly are already pretty good. Photon Thrasher is a pretty good standalone card as well. So we have non-archetype stuff too. Gigamantis, we got all the fun stuff. We have the Evil Source stuff in here as well. I think Lagia and Dolka may be in here too, which if that's the case, it's actually pretty good. Blade Armor Ninja, Crimson Shadow Armor Ninja. Wind Up Carrier Zen Matey. Oh, it looks like it's just Solda. So I think we might have uh, missed those for this set. That might be the one previously. But Zect Caliber though is pretty decent. So this set's like, okay. It is kind of like reliant on just like Insectors being the only reliable stuff. Huge Revolution's decent. Wind Up Shark is good for the Wind Up deck and that helped that deck really just take off at the time. Zen Mayo Invoker. I think it's like a C tier set. It's pretty okay. Veronic Guardian. This is the set that introduced Grave Keepers. Ring of Destruction is a great way to start this off. King Tiger Wang, who saw a decent amount of play. Sasuke Samurai would just shred through defense position monsters so that they wouldn't flip up. Pyramid Turtle and Guardian Sphinx were actually nothing to laugh at. Don Zalug is insane. Uh, Des Lakuto is actually pretty good as well. Book of Life, Book of Moon, Mirage of Nightmare. I'm just naming cards left and right here. Needle Ceiling actually sees play to this day, funny enough. Trap Dushu was nuts. Reckless Greed is a very good card. New Doria as well. Gravekeeper Spy, Gravekeeper's Guard. Wow, I, this, there's actually a lot of good stuff in here, but uh, I, Reaper as well. Wow, wow. I forgot how many good cards were in the set. Reasoning is just a funny card. Necro Valley because it's Gravekeeper. Terraforming, Metamorphosis, Regeki Break. I mean, I'm still just trying to get to the bottom here. Lava Golem as well. I want to put this as like an A tier set, but I kind of feel like it's like Labyrinth of Nightmare. No, it, it definitely feels better than Labyrinth of Nightmare. I'm going to give this actually an A tier. There's a lot of good stuff in Pharaonic Guardian, surprisingly. Moving on along, we have Phantom Rage, one of the newer sets, as a matter of fact. And Phantom Rage was interesting. The set had the Virtual World cards in it. We have the Phantom Knight support in here as well. We also have the Tri Brigades, though, and Tri Brigade is just an incredible archetype in its own right, but Virtual World dominated the format for, you know, over a year. Alpha is an insane secret rare card as well. So, like, we're already starting this off pretty strong. We have other cards such as Zeus, like Zeus is a house, the Tri Brigade Link monsters. We have the Prank Kids Link 1. Geonator Transversers, also just not a terrible card either. I think this set's actually pretty decent. Like, it's not a game breaking set or anything, but it did introduce like two very solid archetypes into the game, and we gotta give it some love for that. So I think we're gonna give this a B tier, as a matter of fact. I think Phantom Rage is pretty good. Photon Shockwave. You know, now that I think about it, I think this set may have had the Evil Zor, Lagia, and Dulka in it, but I don't remember for sure. Obviously, it's gonna have the Photon cards in here, but some wind-up stuff. We do have Hunter, so that's, uh, yeah, that gets some points for that, I will say. Rescue Rabbit's really good, so that's a good one. Uh, Giga Brilliant, there's the Lagia. I think Dolka's actually at the bottom because they numbered these sets in a very weird way. One Day of Peace actually was relevant back in the day in, like, Dragon Ruler format specifically. Champion's Vigilance was the, uh, the Duel Link special, and then we have Wind-Up Rabbit, which is pretty good. There's a Dolka, there's 
there's the Zen mains. Wow, those are actually pretty good. Again, there's not like a lot of like crazy archetypical stuff, but there's a lot of very good cards in here that did see tons of playing, kind of helped shape the format. It's tough. I feel like, you know, yeah, there's Rescue Rabbit, there's Logia, there's Dolka, there's stuff like that, but that was really it. I'm gonna give this a C. The power of these cards is good enough to push it into C. All right, I'm gonna go into this next one with an open mind, but Power of the Duelist might be an F tier set because this set was uh, kind of shit. We have Aqua Dolphin, which Aqua Dolphin later was insane. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. We do have Fearmonger. We do have Dasher, but these are like very specific cards. Uh, Baby Sarasaurus at the time was not that great, but we found out later in Modern Dinosaur that that card is absolutely busted. Overdragon's in here. Ah, okay. Maybe this set's not as bad that I thought. Uh, Overload Fusion, Future Fusion. It's not, I don't think it's F tier. I, I definitely think there's a few more playable cards like in this set than there were in these other ones. So it's a D tier, but I remember Primal Origin for the artifacts most notably because of Scythe. We have Sanctum, we have Morale Tack, but was there anything else besides that? I'm not 100% sure. There were a few Sylvan cards like Sage Koya. Dianea was in here as well. Harume was like a one of O lines in here as well. Angeli. Okay, maybe that's not too terrible. Majesty was actually a very big deal at uh, certain points in the format. Uh, Ragnar Zero was actually crazy. I remember like when this card came out, everyone was like freaking out for how good this card was. That was a lot of fun. Ragnar Zero is cool. Rhapsody and Berserk is also just a DD Crow in a rank four. So that was cool. Araya is crazy. Duradel's crazy. Enter Blathnir was a lot better later. Uh, Amaterasu saw play as well as uh, Karen Gorgon. Karen Gorgon was actually crazy for its ability to redirect targets. Ignition to pop your own stuff. Sylvan Charity for the Sylvan. Diamond Core of Kwaki Meru was relevant for some like weird stun decks that played Kwaki Meru stuff. So that was funny. Xyz Universe, also a very decent card as well. I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought Primal Origin was just going to be like the artifact or bust set, but it's a little bit more than that. I'm going to give this a C. Wow, Pharaoh Servants up next. Is this just going to go with the others that are just in S tier? I mean, we're starting off with Jinzo and that kind of dominated Yu-Gi-Oh for like seven years. So maybe Time Seal, Dust Tornado, Call of the Haunted. I mean, that right there might already just be like S material by itself. Nobleman of Crossout, Premature Burial. These are crazy, dude. These cards are crazy. And yeah, like a lot of the cards in here are kind of garbage, but like Cold Wave, Limiter Removal, Magic Drain was pretty decent. Gravity Bind for stun decks as well. Thousand Eyes Restrict. Like we're talking Thousand Eyes Restrict. Goblin Attack Force was so pivotal. Gear Free the Iron Knight was also pretty cool. And Imperial Order. I'm doing it, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. Like maybe I just have the nostalgia glasses on, but like these sets are crazy. These are such good sets. All right. So there's like no way we're going to be able to... Oh. Well, uh, this is probably going to be an S tier, but Phantom Darkness, this set brought us Dark Arm Dragon, which basically ruined Yu-Gi-Oh. You have Cyber Valley, you have Dark Creator, you have Dark Arm Dragon, you have Armageddon Knight, you have Giga Plant, which had numerous OTKs and FTKs, Darius for the Gladiator Beast, which was insane. We have other stuff in here too, though. We have Super Polymerization, which maybe didn't see play back then as much as it does now, but it's still good. Beginning of the end, Allure of Darkness is in here somewhere. Six Samurai united for the six sams gladiator proving ground this this has to be an s tier like this set is nuts escape from the dark dimension drastic drop off we have dark lord zerato there's the allure of darkness finally lone fire blossom as well goblin zombies just a good card though it's s tier you guys i'm sorry like this is just like in the league of like invasion of chaos sometimes the black sets are like the green sets and are just like some of the most influential in the game and phantom darkness is no exception wow and the hits just keep on coming rage Tempest. That's the Zodiac set. I don't remember what else is in here besides Zodiac. Wind Witches? Wind Witches are not half bad, to be fair. We're going to see a lot of Zodiac stuff. Lithosigym, though? Lithosigym's pretty damn good. That card was banned at one point. Miscellaneous Saurus for Dinosaur. Eater of Millions? Okay. Looking better and better. Looking at the extra deck stuff besides Zodiac isn't all that great, but Zodiac Barrage, it's broken and for some reason legal. I don't know why, but that's, that is what it is. That Grass Oak Screener is also crazy. Crazy. Lost Wind as well. Zodiac Combo. We have the strongest card in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sea Monster of Theseus. We've got some Sub-Terror stuff. We've got some of the original Spiral stuff in here as well, like Tough, Utility Wire. I think that was the second wave of support for that. I don't think it's an S tier as dominant as Zodiac has been, but I think Raging Tempest is probably an A tier. That was just an incredible set. Rise of Destiny. I, I vaguely remember Rise of Destiny having a few good cards, but none of them were like fantastic. I know like Decoy 
Koichi's in here, and that's a very impactful card. The Stalos is actually very strong, so there's another one there. Dark Blade the Dragon Knight also wasn't like terrible. Machine Duplication's like pretty good. Back to Square One's good removal. Monster Reincarnation would be good later. Divine Wrath's cute, uh, but I, I think that's kind of it. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of like a three card set. I'm gonna put it in D tier. It's nothing special. Return of the Duelist is next. We actually recently touched on this in the progression series, but uh, for the progression series, it wasn't too great because a lot of the cards weren't that spectacular for us. But in terms of actual Yu-Gi-Oh, this set's pretty good because we have the Spellbook archetype. Spellbook Magician's in here. I'm pretty sure High Priestess is in here as well. Temperance, there's the High Priestess there. We have the Medulce, or at least the beginning of the Medulce archetype, but Magellan is very important as well as Pudding Cess. Girgia is in this set and Girgia was a tier one threat for several months. Girgiano, Accelerator, Arsenal, Armor, just all fantastic cards. This is another green set, so I'm not too surprised to see so many good cards in here. Grand Soil is a fantastic card. Excalibur was crazy. We also have Gear Gigant. Gear Gigant was just great, just being able to search all those machines. In the spell department, we have Secrets, we have Power, we have Life, we have Wisdom, the field spell for the Medulce. And then the Traps, we have a few cards that are eh, not that great. Soul Drain's pretty good. Void Trap Hole's seen a little bit of play. And uh, I think that might be it. I think that was it for all the good stuff. Also, the Thunders, like, or excuse me, the Hunters. The Hunters are also like a decent, like, budget archetype. So I don't know if this is like S tier, but like Spellbook and Gear Gia were all really, really good. I think this is like an A tier. This set was pretty good. Raging Battle's probably gonna get high marks as well, because I believe this is the set that introduced Black Wings. There's the Phoenixian Cluster Amaryllis. Yep, Black Wings right there, all the starting ones. And yes, we get some more later, but it's where the archetype began and we get some of the best initial support. Kwaki Mirror Drago is a very strong card in this set as well. Uh, Deep Sea Diva is crazy and continues to still be crazy. There's the Armed Wing. One for one's a great card. Black Whirlwind, I mean, that's what brought the archetype all together, to be honest. Forbidden Chalice is also pretty good. Trap Stun's in here as well. I think this is like an above average set. Miravos also did see a ton of play too back in the day. Snowman Eater's funny. Yeah, I, I think this is like a B tier. I don't feel like this is like A tier strong because the Black Wings were all spread out across different sets, but it's a B tier. Rising Rampage. This set I don't think is very good. It does have Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess, which is insane and is one of the best Link 4 monsters ever printed, but the rest of the cards in this set, uh, they're, they're not great. They are definitely not great. We're scrolling through this now and I haven't even really stopped to talk about one. Gizmex good, but that was the first one in about half the set, so that's definitely not too good. Marincess debuted in this set, but Marincess is like fine. It's nothing crazy. There's Apo. She will continue to be busted until the end of time. Some Salmon Great stuff. We have the Tenyi stuff in here as well. There's like nothing really to talk about. Like this set is just not good. Barricade Board Blocker helped it out a little bit, but that's like a common, so that's not anything too great. Uh, Romulus was an import as well. I, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I think I'm gonna give this an F. I, I, I really did not like Rising Rampage. Appaloosa is crazy, and that would not be considered in this, but the rest of the set is kind of garbage. <laughs> now, Rise of the Duelist, however, I think this is probably going to be an S tier. I mean, this set has so many impactful cards of the last several years. Dogmatica debuted in this set, so you have the Fleur, you have the Ecclesia, you have Punishment, I believe, in here as well. You've got so many just individual cards that support, like, other archetypes that have seen play up until this point. Infernoble support debuted in here. Chaos Ruler is an insane Synchro 8. We even have Drill Driver Vespinato, which sees play in Zodiac. Ancient Warrior's Oath, which is a great link too. We have Nadir Servant, and we also have some of the Chase cards, which we haven't even talked about yet. Triple Tactics Talent and Forbidden Droplet. These cards are insane and will probably see play until the end of time. Shadal Schism has seen tons of play and helped bring Winda into competitive contention. Ice Dragon's Prison as well. Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon for Pendulum. Like, you go through this set and look at how many playable cards it's had over the past several years and the impact it's had on the game. I think it's an S tier. I honestly do because without it, I don't think modern Yu-Gi-Oh would look anything like how it does now. Savage Strike, you know, I don't really remember this set all that well. I know it has Borloed Savage Dragon, which is pretty good. Uh, Neo Space Connector is a great way to start things off, though. Fantastical Dragon Phantasme, Orcus Nightmare, Petting Sessor, Psychic Wielder. Okay, I'm remembering. This set's actually pretty good. Aloof Lupine at Common. We have Violet Chimera for Salmon Great, Savage Dragon. Uh, even Quantum Dragon's not that bad, to be honest. Update Jammer, Sunlight Wolf for Salmon Great. We have Elpy, we have Pisty, we have Agarpain. Wow, this set's actually pretty loaded. Neos Fusion actually did see play. World Legacy, Guard Dragon, Pot of Extravagance. God damn, this set's actually crazy. Hmm, I think I'm gonna 
probably give this a B tier. It has a lot of good stuff, but it's, I don't know, it has pot of extravagance as well. I, th I think I'll give it a B. I'm, this just feels like a B set to me, but it's a very good one. Secrets of Eternity. I feel like the set kind of blows. This is back in the Duelist Alliance era, and while the Duelist Alliance sets were very good, this one, not so much. It did give us Infernoids. It gave us Cleefort Monolith and Cleefort Stealth, which were very good, but aside from that, is that, is that like all this set really has to offer? I remember this being one of the lower power sets from around this time, because unless you were like specifically playing Klee, it wasn't really that good, unless there's something I'm just straight up forgetting. Just looking at the list here, not really seeing anything else that's too chase worthy. We did get Farfa in the set. We got Libic, we got Kagno, which are all decent. Wow, that set actually, I almost want to give it an F tier, but like there's, I think there's like more playable cards in this set than some of these F tier ones. I'm going to give it a D, but I'm, I'm very tempted to give this an F. This set kind of sucks. Shadow Spectres, I remember as the Ghost Trick set, but I don't know how much else there was in here. The Mythic Dragons are pretty decent. The Raccoon stuff is in here as well. There's Mikazuchi for Bujin. That was kind of important. Some Vampire stuff because it's Shadow Spectre. Okay, I mean, nothing too crazy as of yet. Dragulon's okay. Alucard was good as well as Kagasuchi. Melier was cool. I think Felgrand was like the selling point of Shadow Spectres, unless I'm forgetting something glaring. Pot of Dichotomy was never that good, although it did see play. Return of the Monarchs, Burst Return, Mistake. Mm, some Noble Knight stuff. Uh, the Chaos Dragons are in here. I, I'm I'm not like super in love with it. I think it's like slightly better than like Secrets of Eternity. There are some play, but I, I guess it's a C. It doesn't seem as bad as some of these sets because I did name off a few cards actually. So I guess it's a C, but I, I almost want to put this in D. Shining Victories is up next. And damn, we only have one more row to go. This has been a very long video, but let's go ahead and finish. Shining Victories was the set that brought us all of the Blue Eye support cards. Also, some Luna Light stuff, but there's Dragon Spirit of White, there's Sage with Eyes of Blue, White Stone of Ancients, and that alone just made the set successful. We also had Amorphage Goliath, but looking back, we had Reaper Cherries as well. We also have a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon once we get down to it. There it is. Blue Eye Spirit Dragon is also a very strong card in its own right. Aside from the Blue Eye stuff, aside from that, Drowning Mirror Force was actually kind of good for a moment. Uh, some Cosmo stuff too, some Kaiju stuff. It kind of tapers off very quickly. I, I think it's like a C tier here set. Like, it's okay. I feel like Soul of the Duelist is kind of like Rise of Destiny, where there's okay cards because we have stuff like Mobius. Uh, Mystic Swordsman level two is also pretty good back in the day. Grandmaster Sasuke was also decent. Mobius is a house, though. Like, that gives this set a lot of points. Mass Dragon was pretty cool, but I think that came in a structure deck before this, but I don't remember for sure. Hammer Shot was okay, but Smashing Ground was still just better. Uh, Mind Crush. Mind Crush is in here. Nah, this set kind of sucks. Uh, I'm going to give this a D tier. This is kind of just like Rise of Destiny. Couple good cards, but that's about it. Now, Soul Fusion, I think, is a good set because Soul Fusion, I believe, has some Salomon great stuff. Yes, it does. We have Pankratops, which is probably the best card in the set, but it was a common somehow. The Orcus stuff is in here, which is what really makes this set crazy. The Thunder Dragon stuff was in here, Dark Hawk and Roar. So that's already like, what, three good archetypes of cards? Chaos Dragon Levianir as well. Thunder Dragon Titan, Thunder Dragon Colossus. We have Heat Leo. We have Galatea, Lung Girsu, Will of the Salomon great, Orcus Orchestrated Babel. We have Thunder Dragon Fusion. Trap Trick was really good. All the dangers from this set were decent. They weren't like the broken ones, but they were okay. This set's actually not bad. This is not bad. I think this is a B tier set. I think this set's pretty good. Now, people think back to Cyber Dark Impact being a bad set. I think back to Shadow of Infinity being a bad set because this set... Oh man, it's kind of hard to find good cards in here. Chainsaw Insect, Doomdozer, Treeborn Frog, you know, they're pretty much like the top tier, especially alongside like Demise, King of Armageddon. And like, that's kind of it. I'm just going through here. Karma Cut's a big one, but that's kind of where it ends, you know? And so I think I'm going to give this set, man, it has Demise, Treeborn, it has like a couple good cards, but I don't know if that pulls it out of F tier for me. Like this is kind of like elemental energy in a lot of ways. I, I think I'm gonna give this an F tier. This set was just like really not that good. <laughs> Once again, Stardust Overdrive was from a time that I really didn't play. So I don't remember the set all that well. Level Eater, Infernity Necromancer at Common. Okay, that's like a decent start. Earthbound Immortal Kakaraya, I guess. Swap Frogs in here, Jin, Releaser of Rituals. Okay, uh, Gemini Spark was pretty decent later on. On preparation of rights, Moray of 
Greed. This this set kind of blows, actually. This set's kind of terrible. A pointer of the red lotus. Uh oh, gateways in this set, though. Is gateway enough to save this? product. Uh, I don't think it is. Christy is in here too, though. I think I'm gonna put this in F tier. I, I think I'm gonna put this in F tier, but similar to Rising Rampage with Appaloosa, I think Gateway is like the only reason this set is good. And that, that that's like it. it. It's really not much else. Star Strike Blast is actually interesting because this set has a ton of cards that have seen play, even though they're just rather obscure. So you have Swift Scarecrow, you have cards such as Glow Up Ball. The Kara Curry archetype is very notable. Watts are like kind of a budget deck, but did see a little bit of play. Shooting Star Dragon, Formula Synchron. We have uh, Beret. Beretto, I believe, comes in the next set, or maybe it's later on in this set. I don't recall. But Tuning is a very strong card. Uh, you know, it's like, it's pretty decent. It, it's like, oh, Okay, we're getting down here now and it's not the best, but it, it, Vanny's Emptiness is what I was looking for. I'm like, it's here somewhere. Different Dimension Ground's also pretty good. Skullmeister, Droll, Knockbird, uh, Gravekeeper's Recruiter, Psy Blocker, Mischief of the Yokai saw a little bit of play. Uh, even some Dragoonity stuff as well. This this set's this set's pretty decent. I'm gonna give this a C tier. I, I think that's a pretty fair uh, grade. If I recall, Strike of Neos actually was okay. We have the six Sam stuff like Grandmaster and all the originals. We have uh, Grand Mole, which is a fantastic card. Great Shogun Shield. Ian was just a very oppressive card to deal with. Electric Virus and Puppet Plant were good. Didi Crow is arguably like the first hand trap in Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's a pretty decent one on top of that. Some of these cards are okay, but like Dark World Dealings isn't terrible. Twister was actually good when like Mystical Space Typhoon was limited. Advanced Ritual Art. Uh, you know, these cards saw play. Transmigration Prophecy wasn't bad either. Pulling the Rug was actually very instrumental. And some of these fairies would see a little bit of play later on. This set's okay. Uh, is it like crazy crazy? I don't think so. I think it's maybe like C tier. It's fine. Storm of Ragnarok, once again, a set that I really didn't grow up with because I was on a hiatus, but I remember that there's the Nordic stuff in here, obviously. We have the broken Six Sam stuff in this set, I believe. We have Kizan, we have Anishi Kageki, I think Asceticism's in here as well, and uh, Shien, I believe, is in this set too, unless my memory serves me wrong, but there it is. Yep, so no one really cared about this stuff. Everyone just wanted the Six Sam stuff, which makes this set very good. We have Shien Smoke Signal as well, Asceticism is right there. Man, this set was actually decent. But aside from that, though, uh, Forbidden Lance was also very, very prominent back in the day, too. Mugasani Magatama was also very good for the Six Sam deck, but I think it was kind of Six Sam. Or oh, no, Maxi's in here. No, no, that's actually crazy. Okay, Maxi Chaos Hunter. It was teasing me. It was teasing me a lot. I think it's a B. The Six Sam stuff is very, very important, but Maxi and some of the other cards in the set are also just crazy. So I'm going to give that set a B. That's pretty good. Only five sets to go. That's actually kind of crazy. So tactical evolution, I don't think this set was that good, if my memory serves correctly. It had some okay things, like Necrogardna is a fine card, but it has like the Venom archetype. It has Gemini monsters, which Gemini is not the greatest. Uh, Crystal Seer was a very good card. It had like the Chaos retrains, but those cards really never did anything. Zombie Master was good, don't get me wrong, but there was like five good cards in this set. Uh, Snake Rain, funny enough, was from that set, and Summoner's Art was as well. Summoner's Art was pretty good. I think we also have one more more card down here and there it is ill blood ill blood is very very strong so mm, it's only got a couple good cards i think i'm just gonna put it in d it's not the best a lot of the gx sets just from around that time had like a couple good cards and that was it and you'd hope you'd pull them otherwise you were kind of screwed duelist genesis took us a while to hit this one because it's the uh tease but i think this is probably going to be another s tier set it introduced synchro monsters it's stardust dragon it's mind master it's Krebons. It's so many iconic cards that people remember when Yu-Gi-Oh was like in its like peak days. Kinkabio is a good card. Uh, Red Dragon, Archfiend, Goyo Guardian, Magical Android, Thought Ruler, Archfiend. They came out swinging when it came to the Synchro Monsters from back in the day. Emergency Teleport was nutty. We had Book of Eclipse, which wasn't that good back in the day, but now by today's standards is fantastic. Gladiator Beast, War Chariot, Herald of the Orange Light as well. We have Charge of the Light Brigade for Light Sworn. Like, are you kidding me? That's just crazy. Yeah, this, this is going to be an S tier. Like, all the green sets are, like, up here typically. It, it's just classic. It, it has to be. The Dark Illusion is interesting. I think the only card I remember from this set is Pot of Desires. And if that's the case... Oh, Gofu's in here. Okay, that's pretty good. But if Desires is in here, I think that also means that Cosmic Cyclone is in here. The Metal Foes debuted in here, and that's a pretty good archetype. Shiranui Solitaire. We have Block Dragon. That's pretty good. Fairy Tail Snow. Okay. Coral Dragon's pretty good. 
pretty good. Some Dark Magician stuff, some more Metal Foes. There they are, Cosmic Cyclone, Pot of Desires. Uh, Magical Midfield Breaker is actually a very strong card. Magician's Navigation. It's interesting. There's some very, very big heavy hitters in here. We also have the beginnings of the Spiral Archetype as well, some Paleozoic stuff as well. That set's like decent. I think it's like a C. I don't think it's a B tier, but it because of Desires and Cosmic and like two decent, three actually decent archetypes, maybe it is a B. You know what? I'll give it a B actually. I didn't think I was going to, but I, I think that set's actually pretty good. Only two sets left to go. The Lost Millennium. This set kind of sucks. If I recall, the only good card in here really is Brain Control. Again, it's just one of those GX sets that kind of just fell short in a lot of ways. It also didn't help that these sets only had about 60 cards in them. And yes, it did introduce the heroes. And yes, it was the beginning of the GX era. But a lot of these cards just weren't really good. And uh, honestly, this is an F tier set for me. Brain Control's crazy, but the rest of the set's not. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, the final core set of Yu-Gi-Oh! for our tier list, the Shining Darkness. Now, this gave us some more Blackwing support. I remember that. We get some Infernity stuff in here as well. Spore is a decent card. We got some Watt stuff in here to help that strategy. Ronin Toten's not bad. We got Battery Man Fuel Cell, Herald of Perfection for all of you uh, lovers out there of the rituals. We got cards for Black Feathers, Into the Void, Infernity Launcher. Okay, that's some decent stuff, but some of this stuff isn't too crazy. I remember Leeching the Light was played in a very short period of time, just as a nice little uh, side deck card. A lot of this stuff, though, has never really seen play. Chaos Trap is fine. Some of the X Saber stuff is decent, but mm, Infernity Barrier is pretty good. Gen X Undyne is also a good card, but I think it's like a C tier set, maybe. I almost want to put this in D. Like, is this a D tier set? I don't know. I, I think I'll give it a D tier. A lot of this stuff's kind of specific. It's like, it's like okay, but you know, it, is, it is what it is. But guys, that brings us to the end of our core Yu-Gi-Oh set tier list. And this is what we came up with. It's funny how there's actually like this sort of curve to it until we get to the S tier and the S tier kind of just breaks the whole bell curve of everything. But I'm actually kind of surprised to see it come out the way that it did. It's always funny when I don't really plan this ahead of time and just do it kind of uh, spur of the moment. And uh, this was a lot of fun. This is a very long video. This is about two hours worth of raw footage. So hopefully when I edit this down, it's going to be much shorter for you guys to enjoy. But I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'll try to have a link down in in the description for the link to this tier list. You guys can make your own and show me what you got. I'd really love to see it. And be sure to let me know down in the comments what you think, because I'm sure your guys' opinions are different than mine. Obviously, it's all subjective, but it's cool how we all have different experiences of the game and we all perceive sets differently. And that's the fun of tier lists, right? So be sure to let me know down in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video fun and entertaining, consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive early one day access to both the Yu-Gi-Oh! progression series and the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Thanks so much again, and we will see you next time.